Hello and welcome to the Infor 10X On Air Summit. I'm Laura Matheny, and I'll be your moderator today. This is day three of a week of webinars scheduled to share information with you on Infor 10X, the latest release of Infor's business applications. 10X delivers major enhancements across all of our business applications that help you work smarter and faster. We're glad you could join us today. Please know that you can get more information about the 10X release at any time by visiting go.infor.com forward slash 10X. On Tuesday, we had an executive overview of the Infor 10X release from Duncan and Soma. Yesterday, we explored how Infor 10X will change the way you work, and today, the topic is make better decisions faster and increase your technology's value. Following the presentation, we'll have an open question and answer session. As your questions arise, submit them via the Q&A feature at any time. And now, on to our featured speakers. We have with us today, Kaushal Vias. Kaushal is the Director of Product Management focused on technology and is currently responsible for ION, which is Infor's core technology platform. Lee Kilmer is Vice President of Product Strategy and Development. Enterprise Performance Management, and Business Intelligence Solutions at Infor. And finally, we have with us today, David Heffler, Director of Product Development, Mongoose. And at this time, we'll go ahead and turn it over to Kaushal. Kaushal, thank you so much for being with us here today. Thank you, and uh, thank you everyone for joining. Um, so what I'll cover in the first section of the presentation today is um, we'll focus on ION, um, and then we'll follow with um, Lee on uh, business analytics and um, David with um, um, with Mongoose. So I want to set the stage. Um, what I want to do first is uh, give you a quick background and overview of ION. I'm sure a lot of you on the phone have been following ION for a while, um, from the days of its early inception until now. But I want to set the stage on, on where we have come so far and then spend majority of my time on, um, on take, making sure that we look at what's in 10X, which is a big relief that just came out on Monday um, of this week. So if you look at our, our history of ION from 2.0, uh, when it was um, branded as ION, we have had uh, five big releases until now, and we just released ION 10X. So there's been significant amount of development and time that's been put into the product to enhance the platform to really focus on the needs that our customers have been asking for. I'm itself, um, just to level set, our focus from day one and has always been and it continues to be very, very business process platform focused. We want to use the best technology available to make sure that we enable, optimize, and execute the business processes of our customers the best we can. So I really provides you a way to model your business processes, execute your business processes, um, and while execution is going on, we also want to monitor the processes for any issues or exceptions or problems, collect all the data, analyze it to make sure that we find the places where you have issues or places where things might be going wrong, provide you a way to manage by exceptions and look at your issues and problems and specifically target those um, so you can, you can improve specific areas of your business and overall um, get you to an operational excellent state to where your processes are performing as you really intend them to be. I want to go through a couple of use cases just describe um, and, and, and explain where ION really fits in is integrations is one, which is really looked at as, as business process enablement. You can have a single system or multiple systems um, that ION can really help you connect to enable a business process. And this could be between info to info applications or info to non-info applications. So ION out of the box provides a set of um, connectors for info applications as well as technology connectors to help you connect to other third-party applications. Uh, we also have a set of business adapters that plug in and provide you business processes for other large vendors out in the marketplace. So our goal really is to provide a way for our customers to really implement and improve their business processes as quickly as they can with prepackaged um, with prepackaged connectors and content uh, for the different applications, whether it's info or non-info uh, vendors. Another um, optimization that we like to do with the platform is a lot of a lot of companies are moving to a cloud type environment or a hybrid to where they run a lot of their manufacturing or core systems on premise, um, and then they run a lot of the other apps in the cloud like Salesforce uh, or CRM or billing or invoicing or HR, etc. So 
having ION um, over the last few years being developed, cloud technology was also becoming quite popular. So we took advantage of it and made sure that we had cloud enablement as well as mobile enablement built into the platform from day one. So it was not an afterthought. It was just a part of the platform that we just brought together um, and made sure that it was a it was it was comprehensive platform that connected on-premise processes to cloud uh, in hybrid or or specialized environments. So out of the box, you again get connectors for any type of deployment that you might be looking at right now or you might be planning for the next few years. Um, Ion provides again a hybrid type approach very easily, very quickly. Um, and, and implement that in a very short amount of time. The other area we focus on is around monitoring processes, is every time you implement a process, things can always go wrong. Um, that's just the laws of nature. Things always go wrong at the, at the times that you least expect it to be. Where Iron really steps in is it constantly monitors your process 24-7 in a few different ways. So we can monitor for events or exceptions that happen within a system. So you can have a single system deployment, and you can put complex rules on it to monitor for problems within your system. So as soon as a problem occurs, you're notified of it, and you're able to take action and be proactive to resolve the problem before it becomes really bad. You can have a more complex environment to where you have ways, you have a process that's enabled across multiple systems. And these can be for or non-enforced systems, or these can be on-premise and in cloud in a very um, complex hybrid architecture. Ion, as long as data is going through Ion, you can again put rules and monitor your business process for exceptions. So you can have problems with order fulfillments if you're running an ERP and you're running a warehouse management system, uh, inventory issues, et cetera, across systems. You're now able to monitor them no matter where your systems are, but you're able to monitor for problems across a process and not necessarily technology or systems. As well as then you can also look for non-events as a problem. So if something does not happen on time or something does not happen as intended, that could also be a problem. So if you don't receive a product in time, that's a problem. I um, look for non-events or non-occurrences also can be uh, looked at as problems and, and detect it for you in real time and alert you so you can take actions on it. A quick example um, that I just wanted to point out is something very, very simple that we hear very, very frequently from a lot of our customers is is that their customers are put on credit hold for whatever reason. Um, immediately, the systems who are the master data um, owners need, need to change the flags on credit hold. Everybody needs to be notified. So if you're taking orders, if you need to get, collect um, payments, generate invoices, et cetera, everything gets affected. With ION, every time anything comes across as labeled for that specific customer that went on credit hold, a manager could be alerted. She can be proactive on dealing with those specific issues very quickly versus in realizing it later. So monitoring a business process to make sure that it actually executes in the most optimized fashion is very critical as a part of an overall business platform. Another area we felt was also very critical is, is workflow. It's this traditional workflow that's been around a long time, um, but blending it in with a business process environment where you provide an enablement platform, you provide a monitoring platform, and then you provide a platform where you can control human and system interactions um, that, can, that can result either in simple tasks such as authorizations to where something needs to be approved, could be an expense, could be an expense report, could be a purchase order, et cetera. It could be something where you want to distribute a lot of work. So if you're in a, in a sales planning or operations planning type of environment, you want to collect forecast and planning information from different, different people who are responsible for it in different regions around the world. So you can distribute a lot of work uh, and have people respond to it via tasks and via information. Um, or you can also then do workflows or control a business process across different applications. So if you create a requisition in an asset system for a part, um, only send it to the ERP for manufacturing and fulfillment if that, that requisition has actually been approved and that approval can process can actually be controlled uh, and be very flexible to a workflow. So having a workflow also control and driver business processes across your applications, which again controls and helps make your business process very flexible, is key to really making your processes more complex and then giving you the tools to enable um, processes that, that, that's going to drive your business. Again, a quick example is authorizations of documents um, that, I, that I described previously. So just a few, few minutes I, I, I wanted to take to level set on, on where IAN is really coming from. 
uh, business process enablement, monitoring, and then interactions with human and, and systems in a very controlled uh, environment is, is what our focus has been. Let's go into um, the 10X. The 10X release just came out this week. Um, it's, a, it's a very important and big release for Iron. We've introduced a lot of different uh, feature and functions. So I won't go through this whole list here on the slide, but as you can see, we have, we have put a lot of different um, feature functions into the product with the 10X release. It's a very critical release for us. What I want to do, however, is just take a few minutes to go through some of the key features we have introduced as a part of this release and, and highlight them um, so you can understand some of, the, some of the advanced stuff that we have introduced as a part of this product. The first one is we have introduced what we call the Ion Grid, um, which helps customers scale out and provide a failover and high availability environment. Scaling out um, with Iron Grid is really no different than if you're using, for example, if you're used to using services on Amazon. Um, so a lot of the websites you go to, for example, for your daily um, buying experience, et cetera, um, are potentially hosted on, on an Amazon cloud, and they provide a grid architecture to where, depending on the workload of um, the web server, it can scale out to multiple servers, for example, to, to address the workload, or if one server goes down, the world goes over to another server. Basically, what this architecture does for ION is it helps us provide a, a deployment for the product that will be up 24-7 if it's configured correctly. So anytime a server goes down or a process goes down on one server, it can automatic, automatically come up and continue to process your business documents and transactions on another server. So this really helps to make sure that ION itself is your 24-7, 365 type environment and is, is available throughout your, throughout your business cycle. If a lot of load comes in, all of a sudden you, you have a website where you're taking orders and a large set of order comes in and you need to load balance across multiple servers, Ion is able to do that very quickly uh, using the grid. So the grid architecture is extremely critical to Ion scalability and failure and high availability environment. Normally, if you want to put an environment like this in your in your um, enterprise, you have to use a lot of different third-party tools. They're very expensive. You need to buy a lot of additional hardware, et cetera. All of those things, especially for ION, is built in with the ION grid. Um, so it's very important, very critical if you're running any type of enterprise um, that needs high availability or 24-7 support. We're also introducing ION OneView, which is the next generation next generation console for system admins. We've seen this, especially for system admins in the back end who are dealing with complex integrations, complex architectures and infrastructures. There's a lot of products, a lot of technologies, a lot of messaging, a lot of logs. How do we find where the problems are? How do you monitor? How do you get down to the root cause, et cetera? So with ION, um, what we've really introduced is one view, which is really where you can track a full life cycle of transactions and messages that come to ION. You can do complex searches, you can look for data, you can look for problems, you can dig down into the deepest level to find the root cause very, very, very quickly. What we've done on top of that then is we've introduced a user interface that is very graphical, as you can see here, that is very appealing and very easy to use. So everything is color-coded, everything has a legend, everything is very clearly outlined on exactly what it means. So if you're tracking a purchase order that came into your system, and you want to know what happened to it because for some reason it either got lost or somebody forgot to fulfill it, somebody forgot to do something with it. An admin can go in and look for the purchase order specifically and look at its whole life cycle. It, it can show what time it actually came into the system. It shows what happened to it, who touched it, if somebody modified it, if somebody edited it, et cetera. You can see the full life cycle of it. Did it go through an approval process? How many people approved it, et cetera? And you can see a full timeline of from when it came in to where it is right now. And you can click on any one of these icons, and it tells you exactly what happened to it, and it has a drill back to the specific level of detail you're looking for. So this gives you a single place to go to and graphically monitor your whole environment. So this is quite revolutionary. We don't really see this type of tools available um, in most of, the, most of the platforms we work with, um, and most of the system admins um, you know, have to dig through logs which is a lot more cumbersome than a, than a view like this. Another big um, addition we've done is we've introduced a high level of security to ION Desk, which is, again, the main place where a lot of your modeling and execution happens. We've introduced a role-based security. So if you have a way to control who has access to the desk itself, 
So depending on the function, so menus, uh, the specific functions within a screen, uh, you look at which functions and who has access to it. So I can say that user A only has access to X number of screens on the menu, uh, but they can view only. They cannot add it. They cannot delete. They cannot do anything else on the screen, etc. So providing a fully secure environment for people to work in where it's, it's fully role-based and then fully controlled on all sorts of functions as well as the permissions based on the users or group is very critical to ION. So that is now introduced in 10X. Then there's a whole set of other enhancements that I will review. Um, there's an introduction of how to set a complex system to human workflows. Um, so if your a system really sends out a specific request, but it needs human interaction to where five people need to look to it and approve it. So you're setting up an item, a master data item, but that needs to go through pricing, that needs to go through configuration, that needs to go through unit of measure type environments to where different people, different groups need to look to it and approve it. And then if everybody approves, the data can then be sent and committed, and now the master item is now available to be worked with. So this is a, a human-to-system workflow or system-to-human workflow. Um, to enable those type of um, workflows or, to, or those type of business processes, we've introduced ways to, to build those uh, very easily in our own. We're providing exit points in workflow. Um, again, this is a little technical, but the idea really is that anytime you want to write your own code, you want to write your own process to extract data from somewhere else, to look up currency, to look up other information uh, for trading partners, et cetera, that is available in a third-party product or in the cloud or somewhere else, we give you the possibility within your workflow to call out to other sources to get the data and then make it as a part of your decision process within IAM. We also provide sub-workflows. It's a very easy way to take a very complex process and really bring it down to a much more manageable, easily viewable uh, way. Um, just provides a way for you to model and execute your processes a lot more simply. We also have introduced a, a full graphical mapper within the product. This is a way for us to not be very technical or not rely on very technical experts to actually do our data transformations and translations and mappings. Having a graphical tool with an with a, um, easy learning cycle, it's easy for admins and, and, and um, people in the back end of the house to create integrations and data transformations and translations with drag-and-drop type environment, um, a lot easier to work with than having to have technical programmers constantly available to, to execute your translations uh, and transactions. Also introduce things like out of office. So if you have work pending or if I'm going out of office, I can delegate my work to somebody else. I can say I'm out of office for, for a week, delegate based on rules, that if it's X expenses come in, it needs to go to person A. Purchase orders or requisitions come in, it needs to go to person B, et cetera. So it's a very, it's like, your Microsoft Office or Outlook, for example, that you're used to, but you can delegate based on a whole set of rules on who gets your work and who who, who gets delegated to what um, that you specify. So this is just a very quick snapshot of all the different things we have introduced within ION. The last thing I wanted to show you is um, you've seen this slide previously um, as, as the different connectors and different technology um, adapters we've provided as a part of ION. Uh, with 10X, we're introducing the Oracle eBusiness Service Connector. Um, this is this is in, in addition to the Salesforce SAP that we've already had in the past. We now provide a package connector to Oracle eBusiness Service um, platform, um, and then we're we're in, in a limited release or limited availability of our um, EDI connector, which will then be um, generally available um, in the next six to eight weeks. But we're also working with with EDI technologies to make that happen through EDI managed services. So as you can see, um, with the 10X release, a lot has gone into the product. Um, we will have a big rollout education process to make sure the message gets out to everybody out there. Um, and if you have any more questions or follow-ups, um, please, uh, we can find more information on our, our internal website. So with that, I can um, hand it over to Lee. Well, um, Kasha, before we go into Lee, and now normally we hold on to the questions at the very end, but we've got some really stunning questions coming in from our audience today. So let's just take a moment and take two of, two of the first questions that came in. And the first one is from Jasky. It reads, when we say it connects in four applications, what about Bond 4 and Bond 5? Can we connect them out of the box, or do we need to write the BODs, and is it supported? 
Yeah, so we have actually, um, Bond4 and Bond5 has a very large customer base. Um, so specific versions and service packs of Bond4 and Bond5 have been enabled for ION. And there's a set of um, bonds that have already been pre-created um, based on the functionality that is available and, and, and what was seen as, as the most critical for Bond4 and Bond5. So that is, that is absolutely available, and um, we can provide details uh, for uh, which service pack. It's actually SP26 um, um, for Bond4, for example. Uh, so documentation is already available for which service pack uh, you need to be on on Bond4, for example, and which are the bonds that are available for inbound and outbound. That's available on our, on our um, Support Extreme website, and if you can't find it um, immediately, you can contact one of our uh, services or support personnel, and they can give you the documentation. So, yeah, absolutely. We've gone back and enabled a lot of the key releases in the past um, to be unenabled. Perfect. And then we'll do one more question, Lee, before we go over to you, and this one's from Don. Can ION be used to interface with ADP's payroll site? So one of the things I mentioned was we provide a set of uh, technology connectors, and a lot of the other vendors out there, so there's ADP, Ceridian, and, and a whole bunch of other, other um, vendors out there, provide a technology like web services or messaging, um, et cetera, to integrate with their environment. So using ION, uh, ION also provides those connectors or those technology adapters to enable connection or integration through web services, for example. Um, so you can use these type of technologies um, to connect to an ADP. So you're connecting with an ADP in the, um, uh, in the environment they specify you're allowed to connect. Uh, web services is one of them, for example, um, which is the most preferred method for proper companies like ADP. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, the best thing to do is look at uh, different technologies supported by the vendor, uh, like an ADP, and look at ION to see which is the best match for the technology and use that technology um, connector to connect to a, a vendor like ADP. Thank you, Kaushal, and thank you to everyone else who has already submitted your questions. We will definitely get to those after the rest of the feature presentation, but we had somebody coming in. I wanted to make sure we get a couple of those voices heard. Now, Lee, thank you so much for your patience, and it's all yours. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Laura. Good good, uh, good day, everybody. My name is Lee Kilmer with Infor. I head up our product development and product strategy for our analytics and enterprise performance management offerings at Infor. And uh, really, this section is, is really building on what Kajal was talking about in terms of ION and leveraging ION for, for making better decisions. And here we want to talk about how uh, we have analytics capabilities, tool sets, and so forth that allow people to get a hold of that information uh, and use it for better and improved decision making. So when we go out into the market and talk with, with leaders in the industry, with customers, with analysts, and so forth, there are a number of concerns that come out relating to information management and challenges around leveraging information for making uh, good decisions. And so you can see some of these statistics here, things like, you know, a, uh, a study by Accenture talking about a 70% correlation between high-performance finance organizations and high-performance companies. Um, or this one from IBM over here, the CFO study talking about, you know, 70% of the uh, time that people spend in doing analytics is really around finding data and only about 30% analyzing data. So people are still struggling to get at the right information uh, that they need to make good decisions. And yet also 48% of CFOs still believing that, that their IT systems are barriers for them in terms of becoming high-performance finance organizations and in terms of helping people do a better job of making decisions based on information. And here's a great study as well from Aberdeen Group where they found that the time to, dis to decision in best-in-class companies has decreased by 23% over the last year as opposed to 2% for other companies. And those companies also had a 3% higher operating margin. So if you can improve the time that it takes to make a decision by delivering information to people at the right time uh, in the right way, you can help have a big impact on your bottom line. And if you look at decision-making within an organization, here's a very simple way of, of thinking about it. There are many kinds of decisions that are made every day by many different types of people. And so you have, you know, the more strategic decisions maybe made by executives or by the board of directors, things like, you know, should we acquire that company? Should we divest in that particular business? Should we launch a new product line? Those kinds of things go into a new geography. Um, but there are also many decisions made by more operational people, um, things like, you know, should we increase that customer's credit limit? Should we buy from this vendor or from that vendor to, uh, to get the best discount rate? 
um, you know, and those kinds of things. And they can have a big impact on customer service and on, on, on the overall performance of the organization. And if you can automate and help improve decision making, especially for those operational people who are on the front lines who are talking with customers every day, you can have a big impact on, on the overall organization performance. And so what we're striving for with Info Analytics and leveraging the, the overall ION platform is to move away from difficulty in terms of getting at the right information at the right time and making decisions, getting rid of the complexity associated with acquiring data from different data sources, the latency that's typically involved in building data marts or building data warehouses. Um, also the notion that, uh, that information is not real well connected to the application user experience. In, the, uh, in traditional settings, so it's difficult for people to really get the kind of insights that they need to make effective decisions. And as well, um, you know, moving away from just simply generic and horizontal tools that you have to figure out how to implement on your own with your, with your ERP of choice. So moving more toward things like data-driven decisions delivered in context of the end user in a near real-time way uh, and making that information available uh, where they're working, wherever they are to, to drive better business, business insight as well as package solutions along with BI tooling um, that allow you to get up and running more quickly to reduce the risk and implementation um, associated with making mistakes by not understanding the underlying data sources very well um, and uh, hopefully more rapidly delivering the right insights to your users. And so we have a suite of applications and capabilities that are within the Info Analytics umbrella of products. And that includes everything from on the left side here, just simply enterprise search capabilities you know, the simplest form of analytics, solving very simple, uh, answering very simple questions, moving on up to ad hoc reporting, being able to let the user slice and dice their data more, answering, um, you know, a little bit more advanced questions, getting on to operational reporting where you have highly formatted reporting or output of information. It could be for, for regulatory filings. It could be for management reporting within the organization. And then moving, you know, further up the chain into business intelligence, getting into interactive slicing and dicing of data, graphical dashboards and data visualization, data discovery, uh, the ability, ability to do write-backs or what-if kinds of scenarios. And all this runs on our, our ION platform and leverages ION really as a data integration engine for bringing information from all those sources that Kashal mentioned into one common repository uh, called the ION Business Vault that we can then use to feed these various different tool sets. And on top of that as well, we you know, not only provide the, the integration and the tools uh, to, to do the reporting and analytics, but we also leverage that for pre-built applications, pre-built dashboards, reports, metadata, OLAP cubes, other content that you can take and, and stick uh, on top of your ION infrastructure um, and start to get, uh, get information being delivered rapidly within your organization. So drilling down a little bit on these different components, we have the ION Business Vault is really the core, uh, leveraging the ION platform for data integration. Information is published from our various info applications or all those connectors that Kashal mentioned. Uh, it's, it's received in the business vault in near real time. It leverages industry standard definitions of the data so you don't have to transform that data to try to connect information together from one system and another system. You can also model data stores, model hierarchies. Uh, you can create mappings and so forth, build dimensions and cubes all from uh, out of the business vault as well. And if you happen to upgrade one of your applications that's connected in through ION, your analytics and your reporting is preserved. It's because of the standardization and the approach we've taken, you don't have to worry about the impacts or the impacts are, are, um, are, are non-existent on your reporting and analytics. Talking about enterprise search, enterprise search can help you answer simple questions like what invoices are due next week or when did we last pay that vendor or um, you know, what's a particular customer's credit rating, things of that nature. And enterprise search is really a Google-like search capability. So if you understand how to use Google-like searching capabilities or you enter some search text, it searches, uh, you know, uh, through the entire, in the case of Google, it's the entire Internet. In the case of enterprise search, it's your business applications and returns to you a result set that's based on relevance of what you asked for in your search query. The result set that's delivered to you is based on your security, so you can't see something you shouldn't be able to see in the application and it can also allow you to navigate into that application or into that information to take the next action so that you can complete that cycle. Talking about info reporting, uh, info reporting is a reporting platform that customers often use to extend or expand the, the standard reporting that's delivered with their, their applications. 
There's an ad hoc reporting capability with a, a nice semantic layer, metadata layer that puts the data into business terms that allows the end user to interact with information based on more business terminology rather than tables, columns, joins, and those kinds of things. There's a report designer for building highly formatted output. There's also an ad hoc reporting environment as well. And there are additional to that, there are reports that are delivered along with this that you can take as a starting point and extend those if you'd like to, um, or add your own reports as well using the report designer tools. Ion Business Intelligence is our business intelligence platform that provides uh, an in-memory analytics platform for dashboards, for OLAP analytics, for interactive analytics, and now um, even predictive analytics. You can drill through from these dashboards into the applications and take action if you'd like to, if you need to. It also works not only with ION as a data source, but also with any other popular data sources out there, including just simply relational databases, SAP data sources, Microsoft data sources, and so forth. There's a web interface, there's an, also an Excel interface, and there's a mobile iPad interface. And in fact, you can download the iPad application uh, from the Apple App Store if you'd like to, and there's a sample set of data out there that you can play with as well and see how, how that works. And lastly, it's also designed for business users and for self-service, so trying to simplify the process of building analytics and making it easier for people to do these things without a heavy IT involvement um, and uh, in a very iterative process. We also leverage our, in our, our BI platform for in-context business intelligence, so delivering insight to people at the point of decision. So if they're working within a particular business application, in this case it's a sales order application, in-context business intelligence can deliver to them additional insight about that sales order, about that customer, and help them hopefully make a better decision. So information that they might not have been able to see in a, in a transactional application, such as a trend line, now becomes available through in-context business intelligence, and the, customer, and the end user can hopefully make a better decision about how to service this order and take care of this customer. We also made a recent announcement at our Inforum user conference uh, around a new offering we call Infor Sky Vault. So think of this as a cloud-based business analytics solution where we feed information up using our, that hybrid cloud technology that Kashal mentioned into a business vault uh, that's running on the Amazon Web Services infrastructure, leveraging Amazon Redshift as a data warehousing platform. And using that cloud-based approach, it makes it easier for you to deploy business analytics without having to deploy uh, business analytics on-premise. In other words, not having to procure your own servers, uh, do your own integration, and so forth. This is available for you in the cloud and uh, in much much uh, faster time to value, much easier to, to deploy. We'll have pre-built dashboards along with this, uh, as well as an interactive analytical environment as well that you can use to slice and dice your own data. Watch for more information about this particular offering. It's something we just announced, and it's coming soon, um, but not generally available yet. So in summary, if we look at the Infor Analytics offering, it's a suite of, of solutions that's designed to help you deliver information more effectively and make more effective business decisions based on that information. Or, you know, our vision and our goal is to simplify the challenges that people have in terms of integrating data from multiple sources by leveraging things like standardization and near real-time publishing of information. We're connecting the user experience and so allowing the user to see more business insight through things like in-context BI or drilling from BI back into a business application to, to, to get that full context and take it, take it a full circle, and also delivering more insight in terms of prepackaged applications, prepackaged dashboards, other content that help you get up and running more quickly. And so with that, I will, uh, I'll stop here and ask Laura, I'm not sure if you want to take any questions at this point or if we should go ahead and hand it over to Dave. If we do have any questions at this time for David, go ahead and, or excuse me, for Lee, before we go on to David, go ahead and type them into the Q&A feature, and we'll, we'll give that just a moment. And while we're waiting for that, Lee, I have to say that I'm a huge data geek myself, so I love seeing all of that and how how beautiful it is. And I don't mean to trivialize this. The, the interface is just so smooth. Yes, it is. And we've, we've done a lot of work, actually, with our our hook and loop uh, design agency that, that we have within Infor around not only making it look nice from a cosmetic perspective, but also really thinking about usability and user experience uh, and user experience design. So, you know, what does the user want to do with that information? How do they know what to do next? And how can we make it simple for them, reducing training needs, reducing, um, reducing complexity, and, uh, and leading them down a path that helps them make the right decision? 
Perfect. And we did have one question that just came in from Jim, and his question is regarding technical docs. So, Jim, are you are you talking about currently available? Are you talking about future? But while we're waiting for his clarification, Lee, what sort of documentation is available around the business analytics at this moment? Yeah, but there's certainly information available on the Infor website and on the Extreme um, Support Portal as well around around business analytics in terms of what kinds of content are out there, what different modules are available, what some of the core capabilities are there are of those modules. So in terms of just features uh, and functions, um, those are great places to start with. If you're looking more for product documentation, uh, more at the technical level, that's something that's delivered with the product and and um, you know, it would be to depend on what level of detail that you were looking for there in terms of how we could best service that. Perfect, perfect. And I think one of the things Jim is mentioning is he's looking for white papers in particular. Is, are those available in the BI? Yes. Um, there, there is a, a site out on the Info.com website. Uh, if you go under the products area, there's analytics. And underneath there is a, a, a number of links to pages about the various components that I mentioned. Um, describing what their features and their capabilities are. Perfect. Thank you so much. And with that, let's go ahead and move on to David. David, again, thank you for your patience, and it's all yours. Great. Good day, everybody. Uh, I'm David Heffler. I'm the product manager for uh, Inform Mongoose, and what we're going to be doing is going over an overview of what the application framework can do for you. We're going to cover what is Mongoose, do a solutions overview, and show a, a brief demo of Mongoose in action. So what is Mongoose? Mongoose is, is, is Infor's rapid development application framework. What does that mean? Um, it is a tool set that allows you to leverage best-in-breed practices to rapidly build any type of application that you can think of. We, we go with the slogan, dream it, build it, deploy it in days, not in months. And to give you a little background on it, because a lot of people, the first question I get is, well, it's a new application development. I don't want to be a guinea pig. Um, it's been around since 1996 in the N4 world. It was actually the basis of one of our ERPs, which is called Sightline, and it's on the manufacturing side. It also uh, works with the service management, and we're actually releasing two other products uh, in the next uh, 12 to 14 months. Visual quality is coming out under Mongoose, and visual ERP itself is also coming out under the Mongoose tool set. Uh, so when you think about it, you already have thousands of N4 customers every day leveraging Mongoose uh, to run their business for them. So. What What is a good fit for someone that would want to use Mongoose? And, and the approach that I take with someone is you have lots of great ERP software from Infor, lots of applications. Um, but as with every organization, everybody has, we call them shadow systems, side systems, whatever. Somebody is running something along the side of the ERP to help make good decisions for the company. And that can be in anything from an Excel spreadsheet to an access database to somebody's intern that built them some sort of database application to gather certain pieces of data. And while that's very helpful and it is making uh, the company a profitable situation, it also exposes it. If it's not part of the core ERP or part of the, the corporate culture, that person, that individual, that, that group of people are the only people that know about those side systems. And if, God forbid, they quit or uh, go on vacation, you lose that ability to leverage that while they're not at their post. So we use Mongoose to help bring those systems into the light bridge them into the N4 world or non-N4 world if need be, and give it a consistent look and feel, a consistent way of everybody being able to leverage it and taking it forward within the organization so that the organization is the owner and the benefactor of that information rather than any one individual within the company. We also have a very flexible architecture. As I stated, uh, Sightline is one of our core ERP products that is using Mongoose to run it. So it can scale from something as large as an ERP application all the way down to a simple web part. Same product, there's no uh, code throttling up or down or anything like that. It knows how to manage itself to go from large scale to small scale or vice versa. It's very efficient and fast. Um, it's 
we've built it with uh, a number of wizards and a number of repeatable, reliable, and reusable pieces of code so that you're not spending time building the basics. Your emphasis is more on um, how you're presenting your, your information to the user and making sure that that core business logic, that, that uniqueness that you need is where you're focusing your time. So why is it fast? Again, we spoke about it. We have a thing called the data maintenance wizard. And in three or four steps, you can take your idea that was on paper of your tables and your forms, run through the wizard, and have a fully functioning form in minutes. And when we say fully functioning, we mean it can run everything. Uh, to use a, a technical term, it's called CRUD. You have create, read, update, and delete capabilities with no coding whatsoever. So you can run through this wizard, put a table together, and in minutes have that form up and running, and you can add data, delete data, uh, maintain the data, filter off of it, import, export. Uh, with no programming done at that point. The wizard takes care of it. So now you now have the capability of emphasizing your time on how that form looks and feels from a consumer UI perspective, and what business logic do I need to add in that's unique to my organization. We also have a lot of the basic functions pre-plumbed. Um, JSON, ION, Mingle, we connect to those completely up, up front with no coding, so it makes your life a lot simpler. And from a, if you do need to get in-depth and do some coding, and there are times you're going to need it, uh, we have that capability as well. We have the ability to script in both C Sharp and VB.net so that if you need to deep dive into a, a certain uh, application challenge, you have that capability, but that's always become more the exception than the rule with Mongoose. And how does it work for us? Well, we keep everything in what's called metadata. Um, there is no compiled code in Mongoose. There, it's all stored in what we have in, in three databases, which are based in Microsoft SQL Server. So you have an application database, which is your application-related data, customers, vendors, items, invoices, etc. We also have a forms database. The forms database basically uh, stores in SQL all the different features of every single form, uh, the component, the position, the color, the size. It's all stored electronically in the database. And then finally, we have an objects database, which uh, we call IDOs, or intelligent data objects. And to, just to keep it simple, an intelligent data object has two roles. It's part traffic cop, and it's part interpreter. Uh, under the traffic cop roles, it does things like manage everything from the database to the form to the user and back and forth from that standpoint so that the communication is seamless. And from the interpreter standpoint, it really helps as far as setting values, uh, lining up uh, tables that are in SQL to compo individual components within the system, setting property classes so that you have that repeatable, reusable pieces of code again. So from a key benefits perspective, um, we are, again, rapid application development. Uh, standard coding needs are automatically generated for you so that you don't have to focus on them. It's very easy to install and configure. We're talking a couple hours as opposed to a couple days. Uh, we are in for aware, which means we're plumbed for ION and JSON messaging to work with Mingle, uh, their APIs, and all the uh, BODs both going in and outbound. Uh, from a seamless uh, publishing, you build the form once in Mongoose, and it's ready to deploy against any platform that's in there, whether it's a full client, a web browser, tablet, or phone. Uh, you don't have to have different versions of a form or do any compiling steps to get that rollout. Once the form is built once, it's ready to deploy across all those platforms. And then also we have uh, cloud-enabled. We are able to both uh, develop in the cloud as well as uh, deploy in the cloud. And you have an option of how you want to mix and match. It's not an either or, or once you've made a decision, that's what you're stuck with. You are able to, if you started off building on-premise and deploying in the cloud and you realized, I need more developers, so I need to go to the cloud, it will let you just ramp up into the cloud with no additional programming, no additional configuration steps necessary. It's as simple as backing up the databases and putting them in the new deployment area. 
uh, with the preserving upgrades, we have a real unique feature called personalization. And what that means is in, in, in the old days, if you wanted to make a change to an application, you had to pay someone to come in, make the change, compile it. And then when you wanted to upgrade, of course, it became very difficult because you either had to re-engineer the changes that you made or live with the changes and not upgrade. Uh, with personalization, it, it reduces that problem down to a very minimal step. Um, a lot of times, forms that are out there, people want to say, you know, I don't really need all those table, all those fields that are on there. I'd like to hide them or change a color or change the position. Personalization is going to allow you to do that. And then when you go to upgrade, it's going to remember those changes that you made and bring them forward in the future releases. So you don't get uh, you don't get tied down to needing a, a bunch of services just because just because you made some simple forms adjustments. And again, just to refocus, we are ion enabled. That's core in the tool set, so that we can uh, we can both publish and consume bods right out of the gate for you. So what does that mean for Mongoose 10x? Well, the good news is because. Uh, Senior management is, was very good at telling us where the plans were and how we were moving forward. We got ahead of the curve on TEDx, so we were already cloud-based. Uh, we already had the high productivity uh, framework. We've been coupled with ION for quite some time. Uh, the browser, the hybrid deployment, that was all there. Where we spent a lot of our time was with the hook and loop people because uh, well, we're programmers and we made a lot of really good functionality. Uh, Hook and Loop worked with us and really brought our user experience up to a high level so that you can now build what we call consumer UI, make it look beautiful. So it's, it's not enough to just be functional. You really want to make sure it's a good user experience for people, which aids in reduction of uh, how you have to train versus it being more intuitive. You really want to try for that goal of, you know, could your six or seven year old navigate through your application? And if you can achieve that, then you know you've gone in the right direction. So here's a chart that just shows you quickly of what we do with the, uh, from an ion enabled core tool set. Um, we can integrate, of course, both with in for and non in for applications. Uh, we have complete access to the vault. We can deploy any bot out of an application with just a simple event that goes in. We can consume any bot, and then with some simple scripting, you can do any type of transformation that might be necessary for that bot that's coming in. So if you're doing it as a pass-through from one point to another or presenting the data to possibly a portal, it gives you that ability to uh, manipulate the data if necessary. But the other nice thing is there's no configuration steps for any of those services. It's automatically deployed when Mongoose fires up, so you don't have to worry if, Mo if it's listening for those services. It always is. Again, with the publishing, uh, this is the screen that you're seeing here is a tablet view of a uh, product that's out there called Debt Freedom. That is a Mongoose application. So you can see that you can really take the step to go and build a portal with Mongoose. And that really opens things up. You don't have to go to various different tool sets to get a portal page versus an application page. Mongoose can do either or very easily and very quickly. And they can reside in the same application if necessary. That's great that you're showing a tablet there because that happens to be one of the questions that came in, which I'll go ahead and jump in here. Thanks for letting me interrupt. Uh, how does Mongoose deploy to tablet or to phone? And and uh, I'm sorry, David, we've got less than 10 minutes left in our scheduled time today. I know that you want to get a demo in. we really got some great questions here. So, um, yeah, if you could um, go ahead and wrap up with, with your, your other key points, and then we'll jump into those questions. Not a problem. So again, just to uh, reiterate here very quickly, installing and deploying, uh, we have everything in databases, which makes a very easy rollout. Personalization gives you that flexibility to not only uh, from internal development, but to your end customers to allow you to move forward and bend the application so that it works forward, not just today, but tomorrow. Applications can be either in the cloud or on-premise, and you can do that at any time that you want, and that covers both runtime and development. I will turn it over to you now.
All right. Thank you, David, and thanks for your flexibility there. So let's go ahead and jump into a question for you from Alan, which reads, how does Mongoose relate to the IDF in the IBM iWorld? Um, as far as features and functionality, um, I think where our strength is over that is we're we're. A you bought Mongoose today, and one of the first things we would do is give you access to a Mongoose application called the Mongoose Portal. And that portal has a series of videos that would allow you to uh, build an application from start to finish in Mongoose um, in three days. And as a result of that, you would probably be trained in how to deploy and use Mongoose and leverage it completely uh, in that 80 percentile type of view and then 20 percent to help pick up uh, through consulting to go any deeper dives in that. So I think we've built it in a way that you don't require a, a heavy skill set, nor do you require a heavy investment up front to get off and running. Perfect. And now on to another question for you, which is from Randy. Can Mongoose be used on the iSeries for development? Uh, no, it is Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, base, so it is on a Microsoft server uh, backbone. It can integrate with things like that using ION or using JSON to communicate from that perspective, but it cannot reside on an iSeries server. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. And now I'm going to jump back up to a few ION questions. This one comes in from Tom, which reads, for discrete manufacturers like us, what is the 10x technology rollout timeline for LN, Sightline, and Visual? Do we have to wait for new releases, or are all these features available to the current releases? Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, so one of the, the core enabling technologies of ION, um, and you heard this probably through the last couple of days also, is, is we focus on ION is a loosely coupled, built on loosely coupled architecture. So we're not tied directly, per se, with either LN or Sightline or Visual. So when ION comes out with a new version, um, all the LN, uh, site and visual teams have to do is we be doing our pre-release days. We give them an early um, version of the release. They just verify everything works, and that's really it. So when I on those GA, these ERPs out there, you name three LN visual and site line, um, but all the other input products that are iron enabled are ready to go with 10X. So these feature functions I covered today are available um, as soon as I on 10X with GA. Perfect. And then from Coburn, what are the sources for documents? For instance, can sales orders be from a third-party e-commerce system? Yeah, absolutely. So we don't restrict um, the, the business transactions or business documents just from Infor systems. So the whole purpose of ION really is to enable an ecosystem of Infor and non-Infor applications. So if a sales order is coming from an e-commerce system, from a website, et cetera, um, at the end of the day, the sales order itself is an XML document that is structured document, basically. So you can um, take the data from anywhere, uh, third parties, et cetera, including the e-commerce specific one you mentioned, and, and uh, just, just it, it becomes um, uh, an XML. It, ION transfers into an XML document and becomes a part of the ION ecosystem. It could be used within an INFOR or, or a non-INFOR system. So absolutely. So that's the beauty of ION is it can really connect to info and non-info applications, bring data in, have it, have it standardized in a single format so that you can really um, enable integrations and business processes across any one of your applications that's connected to them. Perfect. And speaking of third party, we have a question here from Jason, which reads, is ION able to work with J.D. Edwards version A9.3 financial module? Is that something that's a little too granular for us, or is that something you have the tip of your fingers there? Well, I can provide a quick answer to that. So um, the first connector we're, we're, like I mentioned earlier in the presentation, we're enabling ION with is the Oracle uh, eBusiness Suite. Uh, so that is really specifically for the Oracle eBusiness, not J.D. Edwards. But J.D. Edwards provides other technologies, and, and an example, and this also goes for PeopleSoft, for example, that's a part of the overall portfolio there, is uh, GMS or Java Message Service-based integrations. So we can still use that to build an integration to J.D. Edwards. Um, uh, and then in the future, 
when we continue to build additional adapters, uh, we might address specific J.D. Edwards versions. But at this time, if you have an immediate need, I would look at using the um, technology connectors with an ion, such as the JMS, um, and explore that as an option. Perfect. And now let's jump to a question that came in right after Lee wrapped up his presentation. This one's from Zolt. Uh, hi, we have BI Application Studio and Office Plus. Could we use dashboards also with Microsoft Dynamics Nav? And uh, what about Opera from Micros Fidelio, um, Hospitality PMS? Would we need Ion for that? Thank you. Yeah, thanks. It's great. Thanks for your question. It's a great question. Um, and it's kind of a two-part answer. So the, the pre-built dashboards and, and content uh, that I talked about before, which does leverage Application Studio and OLAP Server, uh, and as well as it can be used with Office Plus, that pre-built content that we deliver today is based on information that's in the business vault. And, and the best way really to integrate data into that would be to leverage ION to do that. Uh, because ION can, would, would really help standardize that data and, uh, and deliver that in a, in a seamless way to, to those pre-built content dashboards. However, uh, the, the BI platform itself um, also can work with other kinds of data sources, uh, such as just simply relational databases, SAP Business Warehouse, Microsoft Analysis Services, and other kinds of data. So if you wanted to point it at, at other data sources as well and build cubes and create dashboards and reports off of those data sources, you could do that as well, and that, that would not require ION in the, in the picture. Thank you so much. And I realize that we're coming very close to the top of the hour right now. We've got a few more questions we can take. Please know that if we do not get to your questions today, we'll make sure that we have somebody get in touch with you personally to answer those questions. And now let's go back to David for another Mongoose question. When do you expect Mongoose to be available for visual ERP? Uh, well, there's two for the ERP. For, let me give you a couple things. Visual quality, I believe, is going to be going out in beta in June. Visual ERP, from what I've seen, is going to be sometime in the spring to summer of 2014. Thank you. And a question from Susan. Susan, thank you so much for hanging on here. Can we use ION with SightLine 7.5.20? Um, so the enablement for SightLine with ION was done on 8.03 uh, version. That's out of the Boston integration, so the enablement that was done by the SightLine development team. So if you're on an older version of SightLine, um, you can still look at using some of the uh, technology connectors um, with ION uh, to connect to SightLine to do that. But there's no plans for the SightLine team to, to backport, uh, at least at this time, the 8.03 enablement for ION back to the 7.5 integration. So we can look at the... Um, the ION enablement, we can also look at the Mongoose framework as a bridge that Mongoose has ION connectors built in. Um, so you can use that, you, look at, you can look at the Mongoose uh, framework as an enabler to connect to ION um, briefly um, that um, David outlined um, as a, as a pre-built connector with, between Mongoose and ION. So there might be a couple options we can explore for that specific version. Thank you. And a question from David reads, for contractors doing federal business, does Infor support an interface to SAM.gov to pull subcontractor, supplier reps and certs, exclusion and verifications, et cetera? So for, for federal um, and government type, um, Department of Defense type um, uh, interactions, we, we have to uh, make sure we're fully certified and authorized um, vendor. So we have a public sector group within Infor um, that is actually working to looking at ION um, being a part of that fold and getting ION the right certifications, et cetera. So we're, we're exploring that at this time, but currently um, we're not um, compliant per se with the DOD federal uh, requirements to be able to do that with any other federal systems. But Thank you. And too. Okay. And then a question from Larry. What's the difference between Mongoose and Landmark? Uh, they're just two different plat development platforms. One is built on the Microsoft SQL platform. The other one is built on Java. Okay. Thank you very much. And does Mongoose work with Infor's Lawson products? That comes from Cynthia. 
Uh, it can, if, as long as uh, the product is in, uh, ion enabled or can work with JSON. Yes, we can communicate and work with them with no problem. Oh, perfect. And now from Keith, we are running Sightline. Can we access Mongoose Portal for trading? Uh, yes, I believe you can. Um, I would check in for 365. I believe there's a link out there for it. Very good. And then we'll go do one more Mongoose question, then we'll hit a couple of Ion ones. And this one's from Randy. Does Mongoose support offline capabilities, or does it require a network connection? If so, how does it locally persist the data? Uh, no, we, we have to be tethered to the database in order to work. Um, what we're doing right now to work through that is we're working with the motion people to offer some tethered and untethered uh, uh, type of scenarios where you can leverage motion to get an upload of data but still use uh, Mongoose as the back end office. But as of today, Mongoose by itself cannot run untethered. Thank you. And uh, from Patrick, we have this question. I would like to understand how licensing works for ION. Yes, yeah, so ION is licensed on a per core basis. Um, so we, we estimate on um, basically our, our sales and pre-sales would work with you to understand um, what your needs are in terms of volumes, sizes, users, et cetera. And then um, ION is licensed on a core basis. So if you have a if you have a server with um, eight cores, for example, and and you only need to license uh, ION for two cores, um, you can coexist ION with other software on on that system, um, with ION being assigned two cores on that server, basically. But the licensing is on a per core basis. Perfect. Thank you. And let me take one more question here, and then there's another question that I think is perfect for the wrap-up. This one is from Juan Luis. Juan Luis, thank you. It's good to have you here again. Uh, the, Ion, does Ion rely exclusively on the data that, that resides in the business vault? In other words, if we need to connect Ion with a third-party application, do you need to import the data into the vault before you can use it in Ion? Um, it's actually the other way around. Is the data has to go to ION to go to business mode. So, um, versus what you what you described. So, ION will connect to the systems um, of record or, or the systems that you would want it to connect. ION would extract the data or the data would be pushed to ION and then ION will populate the business vault, which then in turn will be used for the BI analytics that Lee went over. Um, so, ION is the way for business vault to get populated. Perfect. Thank you so much for that clarification. Now, we have several questions here that have not been asked over the air, and I want to thank everybody for their questions, their participation. You've been amazing, fantastic, insightful questions. And again, we'll make sure that you have the answers to that. And we have had a couple of questions regarding the replay information and other content that's available. We will be sending out the replay information next week. And that will include links to other resources, including the decks that we're using in this series. Now, one last question that I'd like to wrap up with. Uh, before we get to that, I want to remind everybody that we are having breakout sessions tomorrow. So if you go to go.info.com forward slash 10x, you'll see the different breakout sessions that are available, and I encourage you to register for those. They'll take you into a nice deep dive for how 10X affects the environment that you're in. So with that, here's a question that came in a little bit earlier from Bajal. And the question reads, try to analyze how 10X version will be useful to our environment. So if we take that in a nutshell, what what really is, is the, the big takeaway of what does 10X do for our customers? And I'll throw that one to Kashal. Kashal, please. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sure. So um, the 10X is, is uh, I would say, quite a leap from the previous releases of ION. So if you have looked at um, or, or are a user of the uh, previous releases of ION, and, and, you know, one of the feedbacks we've got from a lot of our customers um, and, and uh, users who use ION is that they want to move 
additional products online with ION. They want to move into a more scalable, uh, high availability type environment, um, and and a lot of new feature functions that um, they feel that as they start advancing a lot of their complex business processes, um, they now have requirements for. So, I would definitely um, look at ION as as the next next step higher up to expand your business process, expand your integrations, um, become. Your, make ION as a core central part of your strategy for business enablement. And in, in, and if you're looking at ION to be that particular uh, platform, then 10X is the place to start. Um, it, it has the capabilities to be fully available and, and a lot of um, maturity around the, the different integrations, the different enablements, um, and, and the different platform technologies that are now built into 10X. Perfect. Thank you so much. And with that, we are almost 10 minutes past the hour. I cannot thank everybody who participated enough. Thank you for being here, for listening in, for submitting your questions. And, of course, a big thank you to Kaushal, to Lee, to David for supplying your expertise. With that, again, one more time, I want to encourage you to go to go.info.com forward slash 10x. Register for the breakout series tomorrow. Look for additional supporting documentation there. And we look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow. 